Hi everybody, time for an update. I'm going to talk a little bit about the markets and I'm going to talk about the debate last night. Particularly, uh, I want to discuss what the candidates said with regard to debt and deficits and government finance. Really, yeah, I didn't even want to watch the debate because I knew that there was going to be so much misinformation and the, the depths of ignorance were going to be on display monumentally. Uh, it's one thing just to have or to listen to people who are ignorant about certain facts or reality. It's another thing to understand that one of those two people uh, will end up to be president of the United States and will try to push or implement policies maybe uh, in line with that misguided thinking. So I'm going to talk about that. But first of all, <laughs> this morning ECB meeting, nothing happened. They didn't do anything. So everybody's going crazy. Uh, everybody's selling stocks. No stimulus, right? This is a, a funny thing to me now. It has become so absurd as to be comical because even the central banks themselves are throwing shade on their own actions as being non-stimulative, okay? They're, they're like uh, crying uncle, like, we give up. You got to do fiscal now. What we're doing is not working. But yet the zombies and market participants, they, they keep buying into this belief that, you know, the central banks, when they... Uh, bring rates down to zero or, or, you know, implement negative interest rates that somehow that's stimulative. I mean, you start to see how easy it is to take money from these guys. It is really amazing. The other day I said, or yesterday I said that truth does not demand belief. However, belief demands or requires that you ignore truth. That's the only way belief can be sustained. And so you see that market participants, by and large, most of them, the zombies, they believe that if the ECB didn't you know, make uh, the negative rates even more negative, that somehow that is not a stimulus. When the ECB itself and other central banks are saying, what we're doing is not working. So it's really... Um, it's gross. I mean, it, it, it is absurd. It's the, it's the theater of the absurd. Uh, on that note, absurdity, let's move on to the debates where both can, let's just face it. And it's not just uh, really uh, applicable to the two candidates, Trump and Clinton, but I mean the entire body of mainstream economics as well as uh, academia, the, 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 the public at large, everybody, they just don't understand sovereign money. They don't understand floating exchange rates. They don't understand the distinction between a nation that issues its own currency and one that is a user of somebody else's currency, okay? The debt and the deficits are, are all the time misconstrued. You know, you, we have this big debt clock here in Times Square that, you know, just ticks off the numbers, 20 trillion, but there's no asset clock next to it. I mean, if you walked into any bank uh, looking for uh, credit and you said, here are all my debts, the first thing the banker is going to ask you is, well, that's great. Thank you. But what's your, what are your assets? What are your in, what's your income? You don't have that. I'd love to start a fund to raise money to build a uh, or erect a uh, billboard right next to the debt clock, calling the asset, calling it the asset clock. So both of these candidates are extremely, extremely misinformed and ignorant on this. Uh, they believe we have to uh, rein in the debt or even eliminate the debt and the debt of the government. I've been over this many, many times. The debt of the government is an asset of the non-government. I've said it before. I'll take all 20 trillion of those treasuries. I'll take the whole entire world's treasuries if people really think that's a debt that's never going to be repaid. I mean, treasuries are just dollars that are held in the form of, um, you know, they have a term and a coupon, which means an interest payment. And the 20 trillion represents all the dollars ever created since the beginning of the United States, 200 and you know, 27 years ago, um, and minus 
all the dollars that were taken away as a result of taxation. And those dollars just sit in accounts and they're held as treasuries. And for the government to pay back, it's very simple. I mean, they just take the treasuries and then uh, they tell the, their bank, the government tells its bank, the Fed, to take back the treasuries and credit the account with uh, reserves, with cash, and it just happens. It's like some person switching their money from their savings account in their bank to their checking account. So to eliminate the debt, if the government were to eliminate that debt, that literally means eliminating the $20 trillion in assets that are held. Now they're held worldwide, okay? Uh, and the Federal Reserve holds about $4 trillion total, about $2.4 trillion in treasuries and about $1.7 trillion in uh, mortgage-backed securities. But let's talk about the treasuries, $2.4 trillion. So they'd have to take back that those assets. Now think about that. The elimination of $20 trillion, that's $20 trillion, that's part of the, the world's wealth. Okay, that, that is part of their financial wealth. Uh, to take that away is would in no way be a positive thing for the economy, but they don't understand that, all right? I'm not going to get into it. I'm just going to say they don't understand that. Clinton doesn't understand that. Trump doesn't understand that. The deficits, they don't understand. The deficit um, equals the, the surplus of the non-government. If the government runs a deficit of whatever, it's like we did this year, $600 billion, then by definition... The non-government's financial balance went up positive by $600 billion. It's, it's an accounting uh, identity, all right? They don't understand that. They want to balance the budget, which is economic poison, if, if, especially if uh, the whole entire rest of the world runs trade surpluses with the United States. And they have to, because that's the only way that the rest of the world can get dollars and they need dollars to buy important commodities like oil, which is priced in dollars. So the only way for the rest of the world to net accumulate dollars is they have to sell us their stuff. They have to run trade surpluses. And it's not because we're, you know, we're, we're uh, undisciplined or uh, you hear these idiots, profligate spenders, guys like Schiff. It has, has nothing to do with that. They're going to do whatever they need to do to get the dollars because they have to get the dollars. They could suppress the wages of their workers. They could uh, keep their currencies uh, abnormally weak to try to gain some competitive advantage just to get. They have to. They have to. They need the dollars. So, and finally, there is a, um, and I put this up on my Facebook page. I put this up on my, uh, it's on the blog. Uh, Hillary is now working on a plan which basically is a Trojan horse kind of plan to gut Social Security. She's working with who else? Blackstone Group, Tony James, who's the chief operating officer of their private equity, to impose a, a new payroll tax, 3%. The money that is raised from that, and it's a tax on all of us, the money that is raised will be given to these Wall Street criminals so they could trade it and blow it out. And this will be mandatory, just like mandatory health insurance that you have to pay for. If you don't, it's against the law. But then it gives the health insurance companies a uh, total say over your health care. Now, this is going to force you to give your money to Wall Street so that they could play with it. It's already this is already in the works. This is a plan she has to supposedly save Social Security, which does not need saving. I've, I've been all through this. The government can create as much money as it wants and pay it to whomever it wants. It's just a question of whether or not the real assets are there for those seniors to consume, right? That Those are the exact words of Alan Greenspan. All right, so it's not Mike Norman. That's Alan Greenspan saying, that. and he's right. And he smacked down Paul Ryan in 2005 with that saying. So I'm not, you know, I'm not that sanguine about, I mean, I'm, I'm bullish now. The flows are fine. This sell-off based on the ECB is and not doing anything is ridiculous. The flows are good. But come next year, come, let's say, March of next year, you know, we could be in for some radical, radical change. We'll have to see what the policies are. But if, the, if both of them, 
if they're looking at balancing the budget and eliminating Social Security or, uh, you know, paying down the debt, that's poison for the economy. That's poison for the markets. So that's my first uh, update for this morning. See you guys later. Bye-bye.